Hey guys, welcome back to Tommy Legends and once again, thank you for stopping by. So in this video, we're going to showcase um, something very new to me. Um, so this is obviously the Tamiya um, Fighting Buggy, um, formerly known and probably better known as the Tamiya Super Champ. Um, so the original Super Champ came out in December 1982 and was Tamiya's 34th RC model. So the part number was 58034 from 82, so very early on model. Um, this is the 2014 Riri, which came out in October 2014 and that had a part number of 84389 for some reason. Um, so this video is just about, we'll go into detail and have a look at the car. Um, it's my first SRB chassis for over 30 years. Um, probably like many of you guys, when you know we were early teens, um, we used to run sort of SRBs, but they didn't, or mine didn't look like this. It was a bodge of many cars and parts. Um, and I had to spend about half an hour every day just to keep the thing running, but nevertheless it was cool. So obviously this is a very famous Tamiya chassis. Um, I don't know what SRB stands for, uh, and I probably should, so I'll probably have to Google that after I've made this video. Um, I can, I'm, I'm no expert on these chassis, so I'm only going to put over what I actually know. Um, so the chassis took a, num a number of forms, of, or cars came from this chassis. Um, my favourite on this chassis was the Ford Ranger. I just think that's an absolutely stunning looking RC car. Um, my second favourite was the Sand Scorcher, the Beetle body. Um, my third was then the Rough Rider, which is very similar to this, but I just think it looks a little bit more, sort of, I just think it looks a little bit nicer. And this is kind of my fourth least favourite, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's, it's a nice looking thing, but it's very dated. Um, which I guess you would expect. Um, so two things I want to point out straight away um, where Tamiya have really done something different. The the main one is the name, um, Fighting Bugger. You know, this is, I don't know where this has come from. It's obviously due down to the license licensing laws, um, which Tamiya suffer from a lot. Um, and they were unable for whatever reason to give it the Super Champ name, which is really unfortunate. Hence, quite a lot of decals have changed, which they do. We can live with that. But when a, when a name changes so much, that's pretty rare. Uh, normally, the, the lad a little bit on, off the top of my head, I'm thinking of the Fox, and that became the, the Nova Fox. Um, but where this, you know, it's completely different. The second thing that really amazes me is the price on these things. Put in the comments if I'm wrong, but I can't think of any other Tamiya model where the Riri is so much dearer than the original. Now what I mean by that is, for £200, 280 US dollars, you can pick up an original Sand Scorcher in pretty decent condition. Uh, and as I say, it's fully original. You're not going to get one of these for that price. Um, and I, and I, I don't know why. It, I, I look, I've look i looked on eBay at the moment, and, and these things are silly money. I mean, there's a, the new in kit... Um, but we're up at um, like 1500 Canadian dollars so you're up at like 700 pounds I have no idea why maybe obviously we're just getting a little bit rare I don't know the thing's like a tank so I don't imagine the Riri re -re -re being as sought after as the original but these are just my early thoughts so what I'd like to do now is show you the car itself um, I've bought this as it is um, it's brand new, never run um, but there's certain areas of it that have not been done correctly, which I'll, I want to show out. And there's a mistake on the front wheels, which I see all the time, where they use a lot of the wrong screws. So um, let's have a look at the car. So the first initial thoughts are, you just remember how heavy this thing is and how rear end heavy it is. Obviously it's got this um, cast alloy gearbox, um, arms, drive shafts, universal couplings. There's so much weight on the front and not a great deal on the back. Um, so before I take the shell off, we'll have a quick look at the shell. Um, I always thought the front dampers had internal springs because, um, again, I've not had them for years. But they've actually got the springs, the spring clips here, and these are just dampers. Um, they seem to work fine, and they are pretty smooth. Um, the rear suspension, which we'll have a closer look at, runs off this... Um, Tammy, I like damper bottle tube, but I'll take the shell off so you can see that. Um, it's very bouncy, um, and it does some kind of weird stuff like that. 
which all adds character, I guess. So straight off the bat, the f initial problems I see is the, the shell needs tidying up. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll whiz this shell off now and then we'll have a look at the shell and I will, we'll have a look at the car. So the shell itself has three body mounts to it um, on the bog standard Tamiya um, body clips. I actually thought that was it. But then I went to take it off and it's solid. So there's actually a big spring clip here that goes onto this um, roll bar. So I'll just whiz this off. Sorry if the camera jumps. Oh, it's quite difficult to get into. I'm not too sure how. Uh, there we go. Um, and that's how the shell comes off like that. So before we have a look at the car, we'll go through the shell. So it, the shell actually comes in this, this blue colour, um, but unfortunately it, it should have been painted. In an ideal world it should have been painted, but obviously he's decaled it up, so I'm not going to touch that. Um, we've lost um, a spotlight cover, which is a little bit unfortunate, but I do have a couple spare, so I'm going to change those over. Um, decals wise, it's got two BL style and it's got two of the, the yellow ones and I just can't remember what they say on them, but it should be two and a two. So I've got the yellow decals, so once I find the spotlight and I change it over, I'll put the correct decals on. A couple of these decals lifting, I'll get the hot hair dryer out to get these down. Um, but as you can see, sort of the biggest issue is this, this meshing. Um, tie wraps all not cut properly and you can just see it's a little bit of a mess unfortunately screws not all the way down and what have you um so this this whole unit needs to come off the netting needs to come off get rid of these dirty tie wraps and i'll i'll redo it i don't actually think that's supposed that area is supposed to be to, uh, have wire meshing on it but i'll double check that with instructions pretty sure that's open it's just the sides um what else we got um so it's got a big driver unit to go in it, which bolts down on these, these mountings here. So I've got the full driver's unit, I just need to paint that up. It's got a little dashboard unit that goes in, the driver's got a little steering wheel. So this, this all has to come off. Now, there is a little bit of box artwork I can do on this. These, it's got one of these grills on either side. Now this should be in Tamiya Silver. So I will get this, I'll, I'll mask these off and I'll, I'll paint those silver. So is the, um, what would you call it, the body struts that go from the full length of the car. So when this is all off and the meshing's out, um, oops, from here to here, this these bars should be red. Um, so I'll, I'll manage, to, I'll get those painted. So I think when the grills are silver, these are painted red, the, the meshing's back in and the driving unit's in and the spotlight's fixed. That's going to be pretty cool, to be fair. Um, and there's not much more I can do with that. So that's that. So let's have a look at the chassis. So if you're like me, you'll always remember the SRB as having this like waterproof compartment that was built onto the chassis. So the layout itself is pretty much the same, I believe. Obviously, the materials have changed. The overall car has improved. They've made the upgrades that, that it needed to take probably a little bit more power. Um, but nevertheless, I'll just whiz these two clips off for this upper deck. So as you can see, it's got this big steering servo assembly here and you just put a normal standard steering servo arm on, which should have been cut out a little bit better, but never mind. The car looks to be fully ball raced. Now for the price of it, I would, I would take that as a given that it should be fully ball raced. Um, but the, the front end is excellent, but you, you can feel just by pushing down on it, that chassis is flexing. Can you see that? More at the front. It's, um, it's a very strange design. So you've got your steering here, which is smooth enough. As you can see, there's metal parts everywhere. Um, so I've got a new servo to go in. So this is obviously the top deck, um, which just two body clips there. That just lifts off and slides out. And obviously we've got no radio gear in here, but it's, it's, a, it's a decent little um, idea. The only bugbear I have when the clips are on, it does kind of rattle around a little bit. Um, so you could probably put a little O-ring on underneath for something to stop that. So that's that top deck. So you can see it's mega, mega basic, but um, that's your gear, but I mean, if you just, that's ridiculous. I mean, if I just hold it up like that, the whole thing flexes. Um, so we have this wonderful construction at the back end. Beautiful to look at, it really is. Um, no differential on it, it's um, a fixed axle. 
these are so iconic to me. We used to, I, I don't know why, but we used to call these back in the day Hugo couplings because my dad was a modeler and he used to sail our sea boats. And these Hugo couplings used to go from the, the motor down to the propeller shaft on the boats. Um, so it, it does bring back a lot of memories. It's, as you can see, all this metalwork here is fantastic. So it has this nice big shock. There's a, I, I've been told by the Facebook members there's a lot of this that's changed and been improved and Sammy are basically trying to keep it as original as he can. But I believe a lot of this has been strengthened, better casting and what have you. Um, one of the most iconic bits about this design is this, um, what I would call Tammy a damper oil bottle, where it has this tube that goes round and that's actually your damper oil for the rear shock. It has got this nice big bulky rear shock which um, when you lift it up, it's um, it is smooth, it's nice. Very nice actually. Um, you can see the damper oil moving. Again, I didn't build this, so there are some checks I need to make on it. The 540 motor it comes with, the rear rear comes with a standard 540 and the TBLE or 2 speedo, I believe. Um, and the motor sort of gets lost in this gearbox. Um, and it's, I, I wouldn't say it's sort of waterproof, but it's kind of dirt proof, maybe splash proof at best. Um, and then you've got the big spur gear showing with your pinion here. Very smooth, but very basic. Um, so that's that. It also comes, the Riri comes with two plastic mounts to fit on the chassis for the new or newish Tamiya light, is it Li-Fi? Li-Fi battery, the LF batteries where they're really small, they look pretty cool actually, but it comes with two plastics uh, mounts to fit, so you can do that. Obviously the guy who had this before me has just put the basic battery strap on. Um, oh, and that's what it looks like underneath. Now, I did notice a tiny little bit of seepage from here of grease or oil, um, and I'm not too sure if the, the front shocks don't seem to be leaking. Um, but I don't want to take all this apart because basically I just want to run it as it is, fix what I know is wrong with it and then just run it. Um, if I can show you, so as you can tell or hopefully you can tell the front wheels are fit, fitted the wrong way around, that's the inside of the wheel. Now before I looked I just took the nut off, turned the wheel around and put it on and then I noticed the wheel was hitting. Now that's because any of you Grasshopper and Hornet and guys will know that um, when you're assembling these wheels and tyres, they come with two lengths of screw. Shorts are meant for the front, longs on the rear. Obviously the guy himself has just emptied them all out, thinking all the screws are the same, and he just put them on. So unfortunately he's used the long screws, which pop through about two, two and a half mil. But what that does is that then hits, um, that hits on the inside of there, so the, the wheel won't spin freely. So all he's done, instead of fixing it, he's just turned the wheels round. So I need to take, I need to dump these screws out of all four wheels and change them round, but it's no biggie. Um, and what else is there? So I think that's kind of it. Um, as I say, this is one of Tamiya's most iconic chassis out there, um, but it is a tank. Um, my plans going forward, once I get all the bodywork, once I make it as box out as I can, I want to, uh, I've got a steering servo to fit, I've got a, a little sort of no-name speedo to fit. I'm sticking with a 540 motor um, because I'm this the running video I make of this is going to be pretty basic. We're not going to give this thing a lot of hammer. Performance-wise, you can't expect that much. I think this is more about sort of the character and and you know running this thing as, as it was back in the day. Um, to give it a little bit of more sp speed with the 540, and obviously because of the weight of the thing, I'll probably run it on a 2S LiPo just to give it that little bit of a kick, um, but that will be it. Um, and we'll give it some gentle running. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I can imagine, even with a 2S LiPo and the 540, just because of the weight of the thing and how it's designed, I, I should imagine it's gonna be quite um, an eye-opener to um, drive around and see how it goes. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'll get cracking with part two now and um, we'll um, put some gear in it, we'll, we'll get it painted up and then we'll get a running video of it. Um, as I'm doing that I will check all the screws and or as much as I can to figure out what's what. Um, the, as I say, the original came with that sort of waterproof housing. Um, it's quite interesting that Tammy went away from that 
because to me that always seemed a really good idea to keep all your electrics sort of dry. I'm not saying it was 100% waterproof, I don't know what the egress level was on it, um, what IP rating it had, but it would have kept a majority of stuff out. Um, so I'm a little bit gutted that they didn't carry on with that style, um, but they'll obviously have their reasons and this is a much more modern design. So as I say guys, that's it. So once again, thank you for watching, it's much appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us, that would be absolutely awesome. And as always guys, happy RCing.